What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest Heroes! Alright, so... During the last video, King Dora gave us a particular side quest we can take on here, so... After talking to the lady in yellow, we can accept the side quest. And uh, this is going to send us to that Trial Island place, uh, like when we... Uh, in order to... I don't think we've been there quite yet, but we've talked about it at least. So we're gonna go there, and uh, we're going to gain a new ability that's going to be pretty useful pretty soon here. So, as you can see, I have a couple of other side quests selected. I have these, which I completed off-screen, so I wanted to show me completing them on-screen so you guys get to see what it's like to gain the rewards for that. Um, some of the rewards for this can be very useful, including expanding your maximum inventory, um, getting mini medals, getting alternate costumes for your characters, which I believe is what I'm about to get here. No, I got a mini medal. Okay. I'll be getting the alternate costume for Aurora pretty soon, so you guys will get to see what that looks like. So, and after you complete side quests, you can go over here and check your mail, and sometimes you will get a... You sometimes you'll get a reward, or sometimes you will get a at least a letter of acknowledgement from the person that you did the side quest for, which is pretty nice. It adds a lot more lore and liveliness to the game and the game world. It makes it feel more organic and alive. So, sometimes you can accept, sometimes side quests will be unlocked via the mail. Like, you'll get a letter from somebody and then that will unlock a side quest for you to accept. So I have a few side quests accepted right now. I, you can accept up to eight at a time, and then as you turn them in, you will have access to select more. I tend not to have all eight accepted at one time, because there may be ones that will become available later in the game that I can just immediately turn in for their reward. Which is pretty convenient considering that, you know, if you already have the requirements to complete that side quest, you can just turn it in and then you're done. Um, I did that when we first had access to side quests and I'll continue to do that later on. A lot of these side quests I'm not going to go out of my way to do right now. Because a lot of them are just like, hey, turn in three of this random trash loot item that you get for defeating this common enemy. So, it's not something I'm going to go out of my way to do early when we're going to do it naturally. So... Uh, we have a little NPC demon enemy here called Gregwart, who has introduced himself here on Trial Island. And he's going to be telling us how to use the handy zoom spell. So those of you who are familiar with the Dragon Quest series already know what this is about. So we're going to be going into a brief stage to demonstrate how zoom works. So zoom throughout the Dragon Quest series is the spell you would use to uh, teleport back to the most recent city that you visited. So it was like the exit or escape spell from the Final Fantasy series. Um, you can, there is not a version of this you can use to escape from dungeons if there is a ceiling. You actually like levitate into the sky, so if there's a ceiling in the environment you're in, you won't be able to zoom out of there. There's a, I think there's an item you have to use or another a, a, a ability that's unique to a particular character to exit dungeons within, um... Oh, it's a, uh, it's like a griffin wing or something like that that you use to, or a phoenix wing you use to escape from, um, from dungeons in, uh, Dragon Quest. Anyway, um, so here we have these, um, these zoom stones or whatever, these, uh, little crystals that we activate, and by activating these little crystal nodes, we can hold R1 and then press X while controlling either Lucius or Aurora, and now we can zoom up into this guy. He's the same sound effect it does in the classic Dragon Quest games, which is pretty cool. And uh, just like the normal spell casting, the doo 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 like that's the same classic sound effect. So we don't have any other points to zoom to right now, so we just zoom back down where we came from. But basically the purpose of this is if now we're getting later into the game where you're going to have some large-scale battles. So the tension is going to increase. So we're here at Colossia again. You can see I have a view of the entire map, and we can just come back down at the uh, point that we, we left from. Now if we have a, um, if there is a particular node we have activated other, other, in other locations on the map like this, we can zoom all the way over there. So the purpose of that is to be able to go back and defend a particular objective, or get to the, a place where enemies are spawning quickly. Uh, so we have a quick time limit right here we have to zoom to all these locations under, which is really, really easy. Um, these nodes are activated for us, but in a normal battle you would have to go and activate these nodes manually. So you can see where they're located in plain sight, you can see where they're located on the map. Um, you'd have to go and hold down X in front of those nodes to activate them, and then you can zoom anywhere you want to on the map. And that's going to be very, very important later in the game. 
when uh, mobility is important. You can only, again, you can only really do it on outdoor maps like this, big outdoor maps. Um, so we won't have to rely on, on Terry as much necessarily to get us around with his incredible mobility, although we will definitely have to do that in some of the tricky indoor uh, maps or the maps that are in caves and things like that. So we have a brief fight to do here. I'm not going to comment on it too much. There's a couple of Maw Keepers that spawned in. We have to defend the Ingersoll route. And uh, same thing we've always had to do in, on this map. And if you did the refight here, you would have had to do something similar. Uh, but again, we're just we're just doing this to demonstrate Zoom's practical application in combat. You can actually see enemies marching forward on the map from the, uh, the from orbit essentially when you are up in the air um, after you've hit Zoom, so you can kind of see where enemies are coming from if you weren't paying attention to the map. Man, that Blizzard slash extender does so much damage. So this is pretty easy. It's it's a it's a significantly watered down fight because it's basically just teaching you the basics of how to defend an objective while utilizing zoom. And since we're only we only have access to Aurora here, we're only going to be able to use her. So it's an easy fight. We're not going to fight any really tough enemies because we don't have our other party members with us. So I think that's all of the enemies defeated there. So we'll go back to the center and um, all the mock keepers at least. We'll go back to the center and defend our. our Point here, defend the Angel route. So, on a side note, I finally I up, uploaded this video onto the Facebook page. I didn't upload it here on YouTube, so if you guys want to see it, just go check out the Facebook page. But uh, I uploaded a video uh, saying that I finally got my hands on Fire Emblem Warriors. So I've been talking about it throughout this Let's Play and the other Muso game Let's Plays that I've been doing. I'm really excited about it. So I'm test playing it right now on the new 3DS version. I got myself the new 2DS XL, which is one of the nicest designs for a Nintendo handheld we've had in a while. And I only have the initial, like the old first generation 3DS. So this is the first time I've upgraded. I never got a 3DS XL. So I'm going from the very, very first version to the very, very last version, which I think is really, really nice. Um, I'm definitely enjoying the game so far. Uh, I'm liking it a lot more than I indicated in my first impressions, although it does have some flaws, and uh, I definitely don't think it holds up quite as well in terms of production quality as this game does, because the environments are not as pretty, not as detailed, the enemies are very, very bland and generic, and um, this game just has so much more liveliness and character to it. I'm also uh, test playing Dragon Quest Heroes 2 on the Japanese Vita version. Um, and uh, so I did a side-by-side -side comparison of the graphics between the new 3DS XL and the Vita. And again, certain ports and, and games that get watered down for portable, you can definitely tell where they um, had to cut corners. But in terms of the... Um, yeah, because the, the 3DS version of Fire Emblem Warriors is pretty ugly. <laughs> but the Vita version of Dragon Quest Heroes 2 is actually really gorgeous. And I did a side-by-side -side comparison of the opening CGI cinematic for Fire Emblem Warriors and for Dragon Quest Heroes 2. And Dragon Quest Heroes 2 on the Vita, hands down, looks a lot better. So uh, the Vita is still the superior handheld to me. But, um, and not just for, for graphics, because graphics absolutely do not make the game. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely liking the new 3DS XL. I'm sorry, 2DS XL. I'm liking having a handheld with better battery life. And um, the Let's Play for Fire Emblem Warriors should be shortly after Christmas because um, I'm going to test play it all the way through on the 3DS version and me and Michelle are going to play it on the Switch version. I may or may not do post-commentary on those like I do for these other games okay. um, because me and her do so many live series together right now, it's really not practical to add another one to the list because then Danganronpa 2 and 999 will never finish. So I may just do that solo and have her chime in for an episode or two here and there. But the game does have a two-player mode, so there's certain episodes we could do together if we uh, decided to do so. All right, so we managed to get the zoom spell. So that was that was a brief and innocent little uh, side quest there. Nothing really spectacular about it, but it was it was fine enough as it was. So, like I said, we're going to be using that quite a bit late, later in the game, and. Uh, you're going to see in these larger scale battles just how challenging it can become, so let's go ahead and turn in that quest. Let's see what we get. Well done. 
All right, we got a gold nugget, which we'll be able to sell for some additional money. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next fight, and we will show uh, what I bought there at the shops and how I spent my money off screen. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to splice that into the upcoming fight we're going to do here, but I wanted to keep up the action. Again, give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys think about this video style, if you guys don't mind the side-by-side -side with the video clip of us right. getting our equipment because I really don't think that's entertaining to watch well, that and I definitely fun. want to cut Looks down like on some of the video length but I still want to show some of that stuff on screen because I think it's important to know what I do with my setup and my money all we need to do now is get rid of this lot rescue the elder and Whoa. Huh? Whoa. <gasps> Okay, I spoke too soon. Seems we still have a bit of work to do here. <sighs> More than a bit, I fear. The path to the Elder's residence is beset by ferocious fiends, which means, which means we we've have got a whole lot more monster bashing to do. Yeah. Let's get to it. Only one thing for it at a time like this. Stand back to back with your oldest and goldest, while whatever comes your way, and hope for the best. <sighs> mm. I hope for both our sakes you got my back. <laughs> you know I have. Pretty cool shot with all of us back to back like that. Alright, it's time for our boss battle against the boss troll and the cosmic chimera. We're doing a double boss battle this time. So we have a couple of ballistas in this environment, which are not the same as the spellcasters that Isla made back in uh our hometown there they are those are more like cannons these are more like proper ballistas that shoot arrows um, but instead of a single large heavy arrow they shoot a um, a series a barrage of small arrows they have a hundred of them they can fire in rapid fire uh, which is pretty helpful considering we have to fight all these chimeras which are airborne enemies this time so the boss troll is really tough he he is very tanky he can take a lot of damage and he deals powerful physical attacks but the Cosmic Chimera, on the other hand, is the real threat. So the Cosmic Chimera is an airborne enemy, so that's where the arrows come in. It's very difficult to hit. Um, he has a strong flamethrower attack, which can hit us even when we're on the ballistas. Uh, so I gotta be careful to move out of the way there, or deal, uh, be taking a crap ton of damage. So I brought in um, Elena and Kirill for this, so Kirill can can buff us past our our normal de defense, which is going to be helpful. Um, Terry and Lena are going to be my, my main DPS, and I'm going to be focusing on um, hitting the Cosmic Chimera with the Ballista. So uh, we got a, uh, another little monster minion there, a little skeleton guy, upgraded version of what we had before. So again, the real challenge with this is the Cosmic Chimera, because the biggest thing that he will do is he will heal the boss, the boss troll, so you won't be able to deal so much damage to him uh, until the Cosmic Chimera is, ta is taken care of, because he'll just keep healing him. He also has this wind barrier that protects him from damage, so we can only hit the Cosmic Chimera during certain intervals. So that makes this one of the most challenging and techy boss fights in the game so far. It's very strategic. So we're, we're going to use the Ballista to damage the Cosmic Chimera while it's healing the boss troll. So we have to deal a little bit of damage to the boss troll inevitably just in order to trigger the Cosmic Chimera to heal it, and then once it's healing, we can just un open up on him and hopefully take him out. Once we've taken him out, the boss troll should be easy enough. It's just dealing with this guy while um, the boss troll is here. And again, really, I'm not even as worried about the boss troll's attacks. I'm more so worried about the flamethrower attack from the Cosmic Chimera. So it's kind of interesting how they bluff you almost there by being like, oh yeah, no, this guy is a big bad boss battle. Time to worry about him. But really, it's the smaller enemy that's the, the less more innocuous enemy is the much more threatening one. So the uh, the ballistas do have a cooldown there, and uh, they will they'll take a little bit of time to uh, quickly. If you look at the clip I spliced in there, you guys can see my setup. So I have a cautery sword and all of my fighters. Uh, I made sure I have the best orbs possible, except for Kirill. Kirill still has kind of a crappy orb, and all of the fighters have magic shields. So you should be able to see there. Um, on Aurora, she's got a magic shield and a cautery sword now, which is really good at this point in the game. The cautery sword is one of my favorite swords from the Dragon Quest series. So I'm just kind of const I'm just glancing back and forth at the ballistas to see when they recharge, so I can just go ham on the uh, Cosmic Chimera again. 
there are some generic chimeras that are flying around here and just being little pests, like little flies flying around in our face. Um, and I will, uh, I'll try to take out the Cosmic Chimera now, if he's vulnerable. Can't hit him because he's on the other side of the... Okay, maybe hopefully I'll be able to hit him now as he heals the, uh, the boss troll. Because the boss troll has fallen down, so that's his cue to heal him. Great. Couldn't reach him because the boss troll is on the other side. Alright, we should be able to get him now with Elena. Elena should deal plenty of damage to him. Yeah, there we go. Come down to our level. Alright, so I don't know if I've gotten to show it yet, but here is... Yeah, I think I've gotten to show, but here's... Uh, we're going to go ahead and use our high tension for Kirill, so you guys can see what it's like. And Kirill actually has quite a few really cool abilities that I haven't really gotten to show off in terms of his combat sandbox. His aerial attacks are really nice. I never used to use them, but as you can see there... <laughs> so this is... This is hilarious if you guys are familiar with Dragon Quest IV because, yes, Kirill does learn Thwack, but um, instant death spells in most JRPGs have a very low hit percentage. So um, if the likelihood of the spell working is very, very low. So him casting Thwack and uh, it missing is very, very common. I had some pretty good luck with it when I played Dragon Quest IV, but yeah, it happens. It, it's, that's pretty funny, though. It's a very meta joke that they took advantage of there. Yeah, immense credit to Koei Tecmo and um, Koei Tecmo and Omega Force for and Bird Studio, whoever the hell they are, for uh, really putting as much love and care and detail from the source material into all these Musou games. You guys really knocked it out of the park with each entry. Lightning Storm. All right, Terry's Lightning Storm managed to take out all those small annoying Chimera, so we can focus on the boss troll now. He's a little bit stunned there, so we should be able to defeat him pretty soon. We have our after images going. Um, trolls in general, we'll be fighting a lot more of them later in the game. But uh, trolls have a habit of being able to easily stun enemies because of, or stun you guys because of how tough they are. Um, they do a little ground pound attack where they can just smash their, they can just do a stomp, and it will stun you, which makes you obviously more susceptible to damage. You can't block. It's really annoying. So you really have to be very careful about that. Man, he's still still in there. How do you stop these things? That was three, uh, three coup de gras that he withstood there. All right. So, yeah, that was definitely one of the most strategic and techie boss fights in the game so far. There will be more like that to come, but definitely one of my favorites. Very challenging. Quite enjoyed that. Um, Jessica and... and uh, Yangus participate in that fight, but they're non-playable, so I didn't really cover their abilities yet. Phew. I'll talk about that when we finally get them as playable. To be the space at last. Just goes to show you, teamwork's what it's all about. Oh, you can say that again. Ah. Oh, look, someone's coming this way. Well, met, old friend. You escaped unscathed. Could it be, King Doric? I saw that a band of brave warriors had come to our rescue, but I never imagined that you would be at its head. You have delivered us from certain doom, and for that you have our undying thanks. Your bravery, your unwavering resolve, and your readiness to lead from the front line of battle must surely please the spirits. <laughs> Do not shower me so with praise, Elf. I shall turn red to the very tips of my ears. <laughs> and yet... Your presence in far-flung Sylvia must surely bespeak some wider ill. Do you come to warn us, perhaps? The monsters run amok in other places in our realm. The capital, even. I'm afraid so, old friend. Every corner of the land is affected. My companions and I journey in search of the cause, granting succor where we can. So you're definitely elves, right? Well, where I come from, elves are wise and ancient. So, might you be able to shed some light on what caused all of this? Since we first observed the change in our friends, we have been desperately combing the annals for clues as to the cause. Without success, I'm sorry to say. <sighs> you mean you ain't got a Scooby, eh? Somehow I didn't think it would be just as easy as walking up and asking. Yes, I should have known. Nothing's ever that simple, is it? Wait, this monster... 
Do you mean me? I'm not a monster. I'm a helix. Don't worry. I won't hurt you. <sighs> no. I'm not allowed. No one's allowed to touch it. My daddy gave it to me the last time I ever saw him. My apologies, little one. It's just that the crown you wear bears an uncanny resemblance to the circle of light. The circle of light? Long, long ago, two treasures were forged in order that the forces of light and darkness might be kept in check. The brighter half of this fated pairing came to be known as the circle of light. The light shall make the midnight bright and drive all darkness from our sight. I had thought that were we to locate the circle, we might also find a means of curing the malady afflicting monster kind. So, is Helix's crown the circle of light, or...? No. Alas, it seems I was mistaken. I sense no great power within the trinket your companion wears. It is a convincing replica, no more. <sighs> but it is real! It's a real-life treasure! I promise! Our course is clear. If there is even a chance that this circle of light could reverse our friend's transformation, we must find it. Right. And I'm willing to bet that if we do, we'll also find out what's behind all these sinister goings-on. Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you two come along with us? Looks like we're all after the same thing and, you know, safety in numbers and all that. <laughs> Besides, it looks like Helix has taken quite a shine to you. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I was just thinking how it'd break me up to say goodbye to little Bluey so soon. <laughs> <laughs> then it is decided! Let us venture forth as one and together solve the mystery of Monsterkind's madness. <laughs> <laughs> so then, what say you, friends? Well now, how could we possibly refuse an invitation like that? We're with you all the way, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> so then, where to next? Mm-hmm.